Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a lovely day. It's beautiful and sunny here on the central coast of New South Wales. Um, and I hope so. I hope you're enjoying your day as well. I just wanted to demonstrate this little card for you today, mostly using products from our new um, mini catalog, the July mini catalog. And just, yeah, show you how to make this little card. So the stamp set that um, is being used is the Crisp Air Scrapbooking Stamp Set. So it comes with the stamps and thin cuts. You can buy the stamp by itself, but it's very handy to have the, the thin cuts that come with it. So as you can see here, the stamps and thin cuts are packaged in this cool little um, clear um, envelope with the picture of the stamps. And then when you see, you can see a blue image behind some of the stamps. So that means it has a matching thin cut with it. Also, I love the way that Close To My Heart thinks about its Australian sisters and has the, um, well, has the awareness that we use, tend to use autumn rather than fall. So they'll have a stamp set that has the fall, but for us in Australia, they've got the stamp set with autumn on it. So they're always aware of the way that we spell things here in Australia and have that, um, that availability for us to have our spelling of things. Mum rather than mom, that sort of thing. So in the package, you can see, for those who haven't already seen, it comes with a little sheet for your stamps. So the clear plastic, so you can see I've already taken the little stamp off here. So I'll just take that off so you can see that. So the stamps are clear, which is great when you need to re-stamp. Um, so, and they cling onto there quite nicely. So, so they're great for storage, especially for little stamps like this, that sort of so easily go missing. So as soon as you've finished using them, you can put them back on the sheet so they stay nice and safe. It then has, you've got this little um, protective sheet, which is also great for stamping really intricate stamps. And I think I might've shown you how to use that before, but what you can do is if you've got a really intricate stamp and you find it might not be stamping very clearly, you can place that down on your mat then your piece of card and then stamp on top of that. And that little bit of give that the mat gives you then allows for the stamp to stamp more clearly, more crisply. So if you're finding you're having any trouble with your stamped images, just try it with the little mat underneath it. So then that goes there. And then on your little magnetic mat, you have your dies that come with it. I've already pulled off a few of the dies that we're going to use for this set in preparation. So then everything just gets tucked back in to the little sleeve. So you've got that set all there together. So I think it's a great way of packaging and storing the stamps the other little set that we're using today is the um, Sentiments by Melissa Esplin. And so they're a lovely, I really love this font, quite lovely. And especially if you're wanting to make a, a big deal over the sentiment, like you can see there, they're nice sizes. You Sometimes you'll have a design that takes up most of the, the card and you might just want a little um, sentiment but sometimes it's nice to have a, a great big sentiment there okay so this is a lovely set when you want that bigger sentiment so first of all we're just going to oh I've already done it so fold our card in half so again if you were folding your card in half I always use a bone scorer so just using the bone scorer to go down the spine of the card to make sure that it sits nice and flat because it's much easier to deal with a card when it's sitting flat, especially when you're going to be stamping directly onto that card. So what I find, what I'm gonna do is stamp the happy birthday first because I can adjust where I put the flowers. So I'm just gonna stamp this with black. 
So again, you could put any sentiment you liked. I'm going to use the happy birthday because I've got a few birthdays coming up. And then just give it a good firm press down. There we go. So we've got that on there all ready to go. Now for the tearing. So I've just got, um, I've already torn one piece. So I'm just going to use that piece for the autumn. So the bulk paper for the crisp paper has got the lovely autumn leaves on one side and then the rusty grid kind of um, pattern on the other side. So what if you want, because sometimes you'll have the like the paper on one side and sometimes you might want the white edge. So see how the white edge is coming through on the brown. So I'm going to keep that. Actually, I might want the white. No, I don't. I want that edge seeing all the pattern. I don't really want any white there because it's going to be, you get a nice contrast there anyway. But I do want a bit of white edge on the brown here. So if you want the white edge, what you're doing is your the, the pattern that you want to see, you're going to have that facing you and then you're going to tear towards you. Okay, so when you tear towards you, you get the white showing. If we didn't want brown, if we didn't want the white on this side, I hope I'm making sense here, then we would turn it over and tear towards us. So you can see here now, this edge has the white showing through when we tear and this edge doesn't. This edge is just completely brown, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So if you want the white showing, you have the pattern up that you want to see showing on your card. So I want, this is the brown's gonna be showing on the card and I want the white edge. So I'm gonna bring the brown up and I'm gonna tear towards me. So just tearing in any old way, a little strip off, okay? Then I'm just gonna put some tape. Now it doesn't need to be taped down securely. So one or two pieces of tape is enough. Even one would probably be enough in this case because the brown's going underneath. So the autumn piece will be sitting on top. So I'm just going to put that piece down. So this I should have, I'm pretty sure I measured it to fit the card exactly. You can always just snip it off a little bit. Now, I want a little bit of colour this time. So you can see I've not blended on anything on this card, but I thought I might just see what it looks like with a little bit of blending around it to see if that looks good or not. So I'm using close to my hearts this lovely colour called Harbour. So I'm quite loving these ink pads. They come, they're magnetic, so they um, come with a magnetic lid. And if you're wanting, they're water-based, so if you're wanting to watercolour with them, you can just pick the ink off the top of the lid and watercolour with that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on here and I'm just going to dust around the edge with the blue or harbour as it was. So again this is just another step that I've added to this card thinking maybe it is. Now do I want to go around the whole thing? So you can might continue going around the whole card if you want to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare both cards. I'm going to sit them side by side when I've finished them. And then that way you can decide which one you prefer. So then it's just, I'm just going to put one piece on here. 
Now, for those of you that don't have fingernails or are finding it difficult to get tape off, I find using the paper pieces is a really good idea and you just have it at an angle and you just plonk and pull off. So if you find tape a little bit difficult, that's one way that might help you. Now, there's a little bit on the edge there, so I'm just going to just trim that up a little bit. Okay, so you've got the brown piece and the autumn piece on top. Then we're going to stamp, and I really love this little technique. So I think it's called rock and rolling, but don't, please don't quote me on that because I could be very wrong. We're just going to use the big flower. So we're just going to use one of the big flower. So what we're going to do is just ink up our stamp. Then I don't want the first inking. I want the second inking. So it's just this, so you've now taken some of the ink off that, but now you're going to put it at an angle, sort of, so just getting the ink on the tips. So I don't know if you can see there, see how there's dark just on the tips? And now we stamp down on, an ex, on a spare piece of cardstock. So hopefully we'll get that nice variegated So can you see there the variegated colour? So I'm not kind of 100% with that. So I'm going to have another go. So let's go again. So stamp off. And I think I was just a bit too, I went a bit too square. So I'm just going to roll it around. Maybe just a little bit more. Oh, that looks a bit better. So on there, that looks better. It's more rounded. So, I'm just going to stamp that on there. See if that looks a bit... Oh, I'm happier with that. Okay, so you can see the two. So I wasn't quite happy with that first one, so have another go, and that looks better. And then I'm going to do the same with the little one. So where have I got? Here's a spare piece. Just there. So again, we stamp up, so it's the same technique, stamp up, stamp off, and then go around the little one. I'm gonna stamp that just, just on this piece. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. So you can see that one there. So you've got the two tones of colour on there. Okay, so then what we can do... I've lost my other little... Isn't that maddening? When you have die cut something already... And then you lose it. You prepare and then you lose. Oh, that's just rough. We just have to die cut too. Okay. So then all it is is stamping these in the middle. So we're just using the black. We're going to stamp the centre bit. centre bit on this one and I think I have another little one here so I had I had die cut one all prepared for this one but we'll just have to die cut again is it on the floor no it's not okay so that's that step for the flowers and we'll die cut them in a second and then we're going to do the leaves. So with the leaves, I'm just using the peeled paint 
here. So you're going to ink them up. Now, I just want to show you if we stamp one lot and then if we don't ink up, we can get another stamp out of it, which is going to be a bit lighter. So you might think, oh, I like both of them. Or you might think, hmm, I prefer the dark. Or I'm going to have one of each. So it just depends on what you like. So there are no hard and fast rules. Now what I'm going to do is just wipe this off because I, I'm going to now rock and roll that into the harbour ink. And I don't want to get green ink all over my nice dark blue ink pad. So I'm just wiping this off. Okay, now what we're going to do is rock and roll this in the dark blue ink pad. Now this is the joy of having having see-through stamps. So I can now line this up. And even if it doesn't line up exactly, it doesn't really matter. Now, what I'm going to do is if you want to have a nice dark one on your leaves, you could just put this straight on. If you want it to be a bit paler, stamp it off first and then put it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the dark on dark and then I'll show you second generation on second generation. So again, so you can see there, that's quite pretty, isn't it? Like that. And then we'll go again without re-inking. Oh, line that up a bit better, Lucy. That looks a bit better. Line that up. And like I said, again, even if it's not perfect, oh, that looks pretty good too. So what do you think? I really like that. I think that's quite pretty. Okay. So, we just put all this stuff away now and we're just die cutting. So, just getting my plates ready and we'll die cut one of those. So, I don't know, can you see here? Yep, just lining that up. And then just with a piece of washi tape holding that in place. And the same with this little one. Now, this one was a bit tricky on lining up. I think that was not that good. No. Not that bit. No. There we go. Playing round and round the roundabout there. And then we've got this one ready to go on this piece here. So just put those through. Do another leaf. Just line that up as best we can. That looks okay. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's slightly off. It's a bit of a rustic, it's just kind of a little bit of a rustic stamp. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't 
to love electric machines. So good. Okay. So we've got our little die cuts ready to go. Oh, and doesn't that save you time having to die cut all around those? Now it's just a matter of popping on a bit of tape. So again, you're not going to tape everything down. It doesn't all need to be taped down. It's nice to have a little bit of dimension. So I tend to just put a bit of tape in the middle of that. I'm just, I'm going to tape the little ones down and I'm going to raise up the big one. So just a little bit of tape on those. And then I'm just going to use just a couple of these. Mounting tape to tape on those. Now I've tended to put them in the middle because I'm going to kind of put that one down first and then work out how far in my little flowers need to go. So all it is is popping the leaves on. So we want them on the page, but we want them framing that happy birthday. We want to still be able to see the happy birthday. So we don't want the leaves covering the happy birthday, but we could bring that down a little bit. Okay. Then we're going to pop the big one on. Just get the backing off the mounting tape. So I'm going to plonk that about there. And then just the little ones can go in beside. There's the other little one and we need to hide him. Maybe down a bit lower. Now what we could also do is um, if you wanted to zhush it up a little bit. So there's the two side by side. So, I don't know. I quite like both still. What I'm gonna do is just get a bit of um, the opal pearls and just put some of the little opal pearls on the center. Because I, of course I just thought of that. The white opal the liquid pearls liquid liquid white opal pearls so i thought i might just randomly put a few little pearly dots in the center so on top of the black just random In the center and that's the thing is isn't it lovely that you can sort of just think oh there's another little step up and often it's in the making of something that you think oh I quite oh I could do this or I could do that I could do a next step so that's why I always love to hear if you've done one of my little creations and then just done that next step and you can see here the difference in the two the two inks as well so i'm um yeah i've obviously pressed down a lot harder this time in the ink pad because this one you can see is quite pale same ink so it's just playing around with the pressure that you use and getting those different different colors so i hope you enjoy this little video um please let me know if you've got any questions or I can help you with anything if I can be of service to you in any way. Okay, take care and know that you're always close to my heart. Bye-bye.